It happens. In a pool. Swimming backstroke. I hit the gutter. I thought I had just hit the bracelet, so I kept swimming and I finished my laps, checked my time. I found the crystal all fogged up, and so there was some degree of ingress of water in the watch. So I brought it home, unscrewed the back, stuck it in a bag of rice on a sunny windowsill for a couple of days, and that dried it up real good. And um, I'm happy to report no major problems with this watch. It is an excellent timekeeper, as it always has been, plus or minus five seconds a day for five years. So what I'm going to do now is switch out the broken crystal for a new one. Mineral crystal. I didn't see any reason to go for a $30 sapphire crystal on a watch that's worth uh, maybe 70 bucks. And while I've got it apart, I'm going to switch out the bezel insert with a green ceramic one I found on eBay. Just mix things up a little bit. You know, for fun. Go! So here I'm removing the winding stem. Uh, to do that, you unscrew the crown, and there's a small detent uh, lever that uh, has a sm uh, tiny dimple on it. You push that down with, say, the tip of your tweezers while you pull out the you pull out the stem at the same time. Here I'm just nudging the movement a bit uh, to get it loose from the case and removing the o-ring. <laughs> When you flip it over, it should, with a little coaxing, uh, drop out of the case. Then you can put that aside under a clutch safe uh, to keep it out of the dust while you're working on the, uh, the case. You can get one of these uh, small Chinese uh, case presses for pretty cheap online, or uh, I happen to find mine in Harbor Freight on a shelf of all places uh, for about 12 bucks. And you know, they're not Swiss quality, but they get the job done. You want to select a bottom die that's a cupped shape, dished shape, whatever, that has a sufficient diameter to clear the crystal. On top, you want a flat die with a diameter that just fits inside of the case to give you even pressure on the crystal. And with moderate pressure, it just pops right out. The dimensions for a replacement on this model, which is the original bezel, coin edge bezel uh, model, is 30 millimeter diameter by 2.5 millimeter thick. To press in the replacement, you swap out the bottom die for a flat one that's roughly the same diameter as the crystal you're putting in. And before I go too far, I remembered I wanted to uh, take out the bezel insert first. It's easier to do it when the when the crystal is out, otherwise you have to take off the bezel entirely. You slide a sharp knife underneath the insert to break the glue bond. I took the bulk of the excess glue off uh, using some peg wood and off camera I cleaned it with a q-tip and some naphtha. Then to replace it you just put the crystal in place and uh, press down a few times. I like to turn it uh, left and right a little bit to make sure it's straight. Uh, ideally you'd want to change the plastic seal that ensures water tightness around the crystal but it seemed like it was in good shape still, and I'm not going to be swimming with this watch anymore, so I, I left it as it was. I bought a pack of 10 of these 3M uh, pre-cut uh, adhesive discs uh, when I bought the insert, and uh, I thought it might be a little bit cleaner than uh, using rubber cement. But, you know, you could use either one. I, actually, I think I prefer you just using rubber cement.
Here's where I start to see that there's a problem with this ceramic insert. It is quite a bit thicker than the aluminum one, of course, has no give at all. And I believe that these are Seiko pieces. And the outside diameter on the Seiko is apparently slightly larger than on the Invicta. And I couldn't get it to sit flat. So I finally did what I should have done in the first place, was actually measure it. And the effectively the insert uh, was 27.9 millimeters. The uh, Invicta one, the original one was 27.4. So I had about a half a millimeter to take off. And uh, I had to think this over a little bit. Uh, the inside diameter was fine. There was plenty of clearance there. So what I did was I lapped it on a coarse diamond stone. First doing it this way on the edge. It took about 20 minutes to get a quarter millimeter down around the entire circumference. And then I lapped it flat for quite a while to try and get it to sit flush. In the end, I got tired of doing that, so I just stopped. While I had it open, I thought I would just apply a few spots of KT22 grease on the uh, ratchet spring. So here it is down to the proper uh, dimension, outside diameter dimension. I left it with about 0.3 millimeter lip on the edge there. It's not quite flush, doesn't bother me. I'm leaving it, I'm happy. So time to case it back up again. First we gotta clean it all out, which I didn't do very well on camera. I had to open it up again and clean it out. There were little specks of dust, uh, a little bit all over the, <laughs> all over the crystal. Here I'm lining up the movement with the stem pipe. You have to twist it back and forth to get it just lined up right. And then you can press it down and make sure it's uh, firmly seated in the case. This is a really handy pad for greasing the O-rings. It uh, applies just the right amount of silicone. It's very clean, very simple to use. Uh, no more messing around with uh, toothpicks with uh, big smudges of silicone all over the, the back of your case. I'll snug that down with the JAXA tool once I'm happy with the repair. Reattach the bracelet.
And there we go, back on the wrist. Thanks for watching, hope this helps.